So after talking with many ports, we discovered that the crane's operations can be more efficient. So ports ask themselves, how can ports optimize the productivity of crane's operations? We have uh, some answers here. So let's think together. We have one option. As Gary said, should we keep investing in physical infrastructure? Shall we have more cranes and buy more? One answer to this um, could be, but space is limited. There are no space for this. We have an option too. What about replacing old cranes with the next generation cranes, such as the ones that we saw in the port of Rottenbach yesterday in the port tour? Some of us saw it. These are fully automated and autonomous, but some of the ports and terminals cannot afford that. So we think in an option three, what about using the existing frames, using the existing infrastructure. Today, AI developments are able to break us free from hardware dependency and allows us to use technology and add an AI layer to the existing infrastructures that we have. So in our read, we are developing solutions that with minimum hardware add on and the power of technology, we can do the track and trace of container in frames operations how it works. So our technology is based on deep learning and computer vision. If you see this picture right here, what the audience would say, what is this image, for example? Is the classic little car, but fine, right? What about the second one from the panel? What do you think? Yeah. Still, we still agree that this is a car, right? And what about the last one, the third one? You want that? Okay, Gali, this is the last Mercedes Vision ABTR, the car of the future. So here in this simple exercise, we as humans are able to recognize these images of cars. We know that they have the characteristics and attributes that define them as cars. And how we do it? Thanks to our brain. So our uh, brain has say, learned through experience and after seeing so many pictures and uh, cars in real life, we are able to classify them in the semantical class as cars. Computers work the same. It is computational learning. So here um, it is a data-driven process that aims the statistical models that actually we've been talking about, Marco said that as well that uh, are able to generalize and recognize patterns in images, in this case, with different appearances. We apply them to ports. So our engineers developed artificial neuronal networks that are able to digitize any asset of ports. So trucks, wagons, containers. Here you see our black box in action. So for example, in an access control, anytime that a container goes through an access point, our software process all this data and transport these images into valuable data for the customer, container codes. And we do it providing high accuracy. How we reach the accuracy? We train it. So besides gathering real data from world, we create synthetic data. So here you see some examples of containers, we change the letters, the numbers, then we augment data. So we make some small changes by adding a more color, changing the color, brightness, a contrast, etc. All of this because gathering and having data is time consuming and expensive. And we need massive amounts of data to have uh, the most robust uh, models to read what we do today. And not only that, we have trained our neuronal networks to be able to read in harsh conditions. So in this case, you see a container number. Usually, data is not perfect in this shipping world. So containers are already with blurry, with partial damages, with occlusion, etc. And for example, even this wagon that is not that clear, we can use it with graffiti print. So it doesn't matter that it's that damage, that the condition is very hard, we can read it. Why a software company uh, such as with a technology such as ours in, are in the port industry right now? So 
anytime we talk with the ports and terminals, we still uh, find out that they still perform in manual tasks with the, the whiteboard, the Excel, pen and paper. Uh, for them to access to this type of solution is very expensive because it's very hardware intensive as well. Or they have a solution, but it's not performing in the real way. Here in our rig, we want to disrupt what it is in the market today. So in comparison of what we have of the CC solutions, then uh, we want to bring a more um, a lightweight solution that with less we do more. Here is the image. So with only two cameras, a server, and our software, we can track a container in a truck in any entry of exit of reading point in the port. How we apply this in a tangible case today uh, with the CTS case with print. So today they have uh, three cranes, river cranes. They do 200,000 crane handlings per year, more or less. And their problem was that they, when they were handling the containers, they have some risk of errors. But they were looking for a solution, but in the, didn't find a solution that solved the problem and it still protects the return on investment. Their expectations now in the existing process. This is the typical process that they have the loading plan, integrated storage system, then uh, executed to the crane's operations. The problem here is the risk of error because uh, the error was not detected on time. So when they find out they're ready, the container already left, it was in another terminal. What were the expectations of the terminal? So besides controlling the entry and exit of the containers, we needed to uh, ensure that the seals were on the containers and provide a uh, proof of conditions of the containers, taking pictures of all sides of the containers. Why? To reduce cost of errors and uh, have a better use of resources and time. So here I will introduce our 30 year old uh, river train, it's almost my age, and uh, it's very simple. We put two cameras, one server and our software. This is the old with style, very minimal hardware and the power of technology. We were able here in this case to read under all conditions. So here you see bad lighting, distance, if it's near, this is far, uh, watermarks in the lens on the, on the camera, sunset, sunshine, all kinds of lightings, blurriness, and even if there was like a shadow or it was dark. So we read day and night. Other challenge was uh, the crane movement. So you see here that regardless of the container, the position of the container in the image, we are able to catch the boat in the middle, in the upper side, in the center, in the, in the lower side. So for us, all of this is thanks to our uh, robot screening models that we have built today. And today, the operators are using this monitoring panel to supervise all the operations so they can see the containers, reduce the errors, and have immediate action when needed, reduce, reducing all these mistakes and the cost associated to them. We keep improving our models, so today we are able to detect the seals here on the air. As you can see, we are reading the containers in movement and with the same two cameras. Now the new process is the same load plan with the same toes, with the same operation of the train, but there is no mistakes today. And we are able to provide now a process with no friction, without impacting the customer's operations, this infrastructure with low hardware requirements, that is like a plug and play. Now they don't have these issues anymore, they detect the errors before shipping, and have the proof of condition needed to complete the operation how we have applied deep learning in ports. Here are some uh, projects uh, that we have worked in Europe and Latin America, for example, for boats in the port of Bilbao, using the existing cameras that the port already has with only one camera. We are able to read container codes, the license plates of the truck, of the trailer, 
identify dangerous cargo, and even do seal detection with the same camera. We do a free flow. So here with only one camera, we are able to catch the goats up to, uh, with the speeds up to 60, 80 kilometers per hour without stopping the truck. This is in Chile, in San Antonio. So it doesn't matter what the license plate is. In the door, you see here uh, that it's going to appear in the right. And after the license plate is going to be placed in the center, we are going to find the code and deliver this data to the client's codes directly. For the rate, for example. So we developed a solution for the Port of Barcelona to deliver the map of the train. So anytime a train passes, the operational director, King Tonta, and here I see a representative of the Port of Barcelona, receives a file with all the information of the train. Wagons, uh, container codes, timestamps, etc. Here we are using CCTV cameras to do the same traceability of double state containers. And in Valencia, we have the same solution uh, to deliver the map of the train. So we have many configurations for the rail, and we can also work with trains. Here, only using one camera, we are able to detect the codes in movement when a uh, process of charging the charging, uh, containers from vessels operations. And this is the last one, a uh, case in Hage Car Cargo, which is the one that I presented today. As you can see, we read these codes in the film with only two cameras.